Hey guys, what's happening? So, working on my 3D printer, the Orca concept, and uh, I'm over these LEDs, man, these RGB NeoPixels. These are annoying. Um, I don't like the color of them, man. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to see. It's like a white light, but it's not even a good white light. So I can't stand it. I have two on there each of there, but I'm going to be going to Cobb LEDs, and I'll show you that in a second here. Yeah, I can't stand these things, man. Yeah, what's funny, they don't they don't work reliably also on the Monster 8 board. I don't know if they had a bad NeoPixel controller, but it worked fine on my other boards. Um, but the color is just, it's, I, I prefer a natural light. Um, and I'll show you an L, L, or LED string that I've used it before. It's actually a Cobb LED, it's called a Cobb. And there's a diffuser built into it. That's what makes it so nice and nice to look at, you know, it's not... I can't stand that blue light, you know, the blue LED light. Um, so there's, see that yellow strip? It's actually a diffuser. So there's less LEDs, it's going to use up less power, but it, it evenly distributes the light. So you don't have like all those like little dots, you know what I mean, of, of the LEDs. Plus it's a more natural light. These are 4, 000, 4K. So 3000K is like really, uh, it's really natural light. It's sort of like an incandescent in bulb, like the old school bulbs. Um, and then like 6,000 or 7,000 like the gets, gets cooler and cooler like bluer and bluer um, I'll put a link down below these were pre actually pretty cheap so um, with the RGB lighting I actually had to use an external 5 volt uh, a little box I put together that was from an old AC adapter on the uh, Cobb LEDs I'm actually going to run this off this is just an SKR 103 board I'm just showing this as representation it's not the board I have in the machine but I'm going to be running it on a, uh, actually off the main power supply power. So the, I have a 24 volt power supply in that machine. So I'm going to be using the extra hot end that I have um, to power the actual LED strip. And so it's going to be controlled by one of these MOSFETs. Um, so you're basically going to be running the actual power through the actual the main power of the board. Um, but I'm assuming these will probably use up less power just because we're talking less and smaller LEDs uh, less capacity like there's a lot there's, these are high, high density but um, yeah those were a headache I'm mean, actually I said I got them to work on certain boards but certain it, it, every board was hit or miss so yeah the color was horrible so um, alright so it's got to run uh, two uh, two power lines you know like I said with, with the with the RGB NeoPixel lighting you need power 5 volt power and then you need the signal wire, which is usually the center wire, um, to control it. Yeah, that way you can control individual and addressable LEDs. But this is just basically on and off, and I'll show you my script that I have in Clipper that is, uses pulse bus modulation to control it. So, pulse bus modulation, I won't get into it, I've made a video about it, but it's an average of the power. Um, it, it goes in a, in a square waveform. You can see that on the oscilloscope. Um, so yeah, that way I can, I, because I want to be able to control the, the power, um, so if I'm not, you know, like I said, I don't want the, the lights to be on 20, because at night time and this is running in my garage, I just turn the light off, I don't need to be running, pulling down a, a few amps of power for no reason, so I don't know exactly how much these are going to pull, but I'm going to hook up to my, um, I'm going to hook a strip up to my, uh, power supply here, and we'll see how much this is actually pulling down. Um, because another consideration is, you know, over overdoing your uh, main power supply. Um, you know, because right now I'm powering the, the heated bed, hot end, all the fans from the 24 volt power supply. So I'd basically be adding more more current, pulling more current from it. All right, so uh, let me cut some strips off and we'll do some uh, power test. All right, so when you cut them, these are actually really good cutters right here. It's like a razor blade. Love these. I use these for cutting hoses and when I need a really flat, precise cut. So you just cut them between the little things here. I'm not going to use that first part of it. Um, I'm going to solder some new wires on. So I'm going to cut the strips out, and yeah, it's a lot easier. I don't have to. I don't have to worry about direction or any of that kind of stuff. But I'm hoping the. I mean, from my experience with Cobb LEDs, you know, because I have some Cobbs on those ones, the lighting is superior to me at least. It's easier, easier to see details in like the parts and stuff, whereas the blue, it's you know, you don't. It's hard to see with the blue light. At least it is for me. 
maybe about 20 millimeters off from the max just because you have less room to cut here between the segments like you can get more precise with these because you have like less uh, area you can cut so I'm going to be about 20 millimeters shy of the full length but it really doesn't matter all right, it's getting kind of dark outside, so I, I created some wires here, and I, I forget the, they're not, not JST, I forget the name of these connectors. I had some extra ones left over, so that way in case these, an individual string fails, I can just resolder the clip back on here, on the string. Because these, I have actually had these fail before, so um, that way I can just pull the individual string out. Let's see how this works here. All right, see how much more natural that light is? You know? It's so much more of a natural white. <clears throat> you know, especially for seeing shadows and stuff, being able to actually look at detail. Like, it's hard to see the detail with that blue light. So, um, yeah, here's an individual, like, uh, here's an example here. Actually, let me turn off the light overhead LED here. Alright, see that up there? So, yeah, you can see so much more detail with that um, the yellow light, you know, the warm light. All right, so I got to put these uh, on the printer and route the wires down and get it into the uh, heated bed, uh, or excuse me, the hot end uh, MOSFET or uh, port. Right, so there it is. I have it in hot end two. So I guess this board actually has three hot ends. So I already have that <coughs> pin defined in uh, clipper. So, um, all right, let's fire a clipper up and uh, see if this thing turns on. All right. Lights off, lights on. All right, there we go. So much stuff on that RGB. But the light is so much better for me, yeah, for, for detail. You'll be able to look at the first layer to see how it's coming down. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't, the blue light was too hard, at least for my eyes, it was too hard to see. So, um, yeah, I guess I haven't uploaded these little the mounts yet, but uh, they'll be on my Thingiverse page. I'll put down the script to the macro, because um, there should be a toggle, I don't think you can see from this LCD, but on the main web page, you could actually uh, change the actual uh, pulse width modulation, or the actual voltage, to change how bright or dim this is, like a dim setting. On the web page, you can see the uh, case light function right here, the slider, and when I go back to the printer, I'll show you. Uh, this might not show up very good on my camera, the frame rate. You can see I can control the, the brightness with the slider. So, all right, cool guys. Uh, put the script down below in the YouTube description, the uh, macro to control the lights. And, uh, all right, guys, cool, having fun.